All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to prove the squeeze theorem, also known as Le Théorème des Gendarmes, the Einschnürungssatz, El Théorème del Sandwich, and Grazier Fischer de Guy. And all it says is the following. Suppose you have a function G that's squeezed between F and H. So suppose this is, suppose this is F, this is H, and you have a function g in between the two, then if the limit as x goes to a of f of x, so the blue function equals to the limit as x goes to a of the red function h, then the limit as x goes to a of the middle function g is also l. So, all it says is the following, suppose f of x is, so g of x is between f and h, and for all x that's in near a, and the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals to the limit as x goes to a of h of x and it equals l, then the limit of the middle function is also l. The limit as x goes to a of g of x equals l. And I've done like, I think, six videos on an example of the squeeze theorem, so and you feel free to watch them. I should rather say I've done the same example in six different languages, but now let's just focus on proving this. All right, so here's the proof. So let epsilon be given. And let's first talk about f. So since the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l, we know that there is. So usually we write delta, but now let's just write delta 1, because we'll use delta as our final thing at the end, such that if uh, x minus a is less than delta 1, and x is not equal to a, then f of x minus l is less than epsilon, but then this just implies f of x minus l is between epsilon and minus epsilon. And now, just focusing on this part, because f is a smaller function, we get f of x is bigger than l minus epsilon. On the other hand, we repeat the same proof but with h. So since the limit as x goes to a of h of x equals l, there is, is some delta 2 positive such that if x minus a is less than delta 2 with x not equal to a, then absolute value of h of x minus l is less than epsilon, but by the same token, this implies the same thing as h of x minus l is less than epsilon. And uh, you'll see it goes the right way because uh, h is a bigger function here. Now, in particular, what happens if you choose the smaller one of uh, delta 1 and delta 2? So now let um, delta to be the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2, positive, okay? And a little side note, technically we need to choose delta so small that actually the inequality between f, g, and h holds, but we can do that. Let's just sweep it under the rug. And um, then 
if uh, x minus a is less than delta and x is not equal a, then on the one hand, we have x minus a is less than delta 1, which implies that f of x is bigger than l minus epsilon. That's what we've shown. And on the other hand, x minus a is less than delta 2, which implies, well, h of x is less than l plus epsilon. Is less than l plus epsilon. Okay. But then what can we tell, what can we say about g? Because remember, we want to show that g goes to l. But look, a g of x, well, it's less than or equal, it's squeezed between f of x and h of x. But here's the thing, and that's where the inequalities go the right way. h of x is less than l plus epsilon. And on the other hand, f of x is greater than l minus epsilon. So, if you just focus on the bigger part here, this part and the middle part, g of x is actually squeezed between l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon. So in other words, g of x minus l is less than uh, minus epsilon and epsilon. And well, if a number is between minus epsilon and epsilon, the absolute value of the number is less than epsilon. And therefore, we're actually done. Why? Because we assume epsilon was arbitrary. We found a delta such that if x minus a is less than delta, then g of x minus l is less than epsilon, and therefore we can conclude that the limit as x goes to a of g of x is equal to l. And therefore we're done and we can squeeze ourselves because we're so happy that we proved this. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.